Hey community, welcome back. And if this is your first time here, I'm Dr. Blair, a doc in clinical psychology. And on this channel, we discuss psychology, inspiration, social justice, and all topics in between. First things first, hit that subscribe and bell button. I need to see you back next week. And of course, stay tuned because today we're going to talk a little bit more about what comes along with this season and how it influences our mental health. Stay tuned. All right, so let's jump into it. What comes along with this season? And what do I mean by season? I'm talking about the fall and winter time. And I'm starting to talk about it a little bit more because now we're at, we've actually kind of settled into this season shift. And what we often see is an increase in depressive symptoms or things that often come along with depression. And what does that mean? It means that we see a lowered mood, even some um, heightened sadness, depressive symptoms like changes in your sleep pattern, your eating pattern, maybe you're eating more or less. Typically, we see people eat more during this time and even with our changes in our sleep pattern and for those of us who live further north or even in uh, areas like Chicago like myself we are seeing the sun go down as early as four something even five and it can make people feel like the day is gone and so we scurry into the house and we're in the house a lot more than we are outside which impacts our ability to be able to take in more vitamin D now I know some people are like well what vitamin D there's no sun now anyways yes true we are getting less light exposure and that is why we have a lot of people in northern regions who experience a vitamin d deficiency and believe it not but believe it or not vitamin d deficiency actually influences our mood and our energy level so we have a tendency to want to sleep a lot more now this does not necessarily mean that you are suffering from what we call seasonal affective disorder but instead it may be indicators for you to reach out to a professional for additional support why? Because sometimes it may have gotten, if it's gotten to a point where you feel like you're not able to manage it on your own or you're doing things to counter a lot of the changes to the season and it's not seeming to be effective, that is at a point where I want you to reach out to a professional. And of course, if it has gotten to a point where you are starting to have thoughts that um, indicate a desire to hurt yourself or someone else, I will always say reach out to a professional, even a hotline, or even going to speak to your PCP if you do not have a primary care, care physician, if you do not have access or are already connected to a licensed therapist. And of course, if it is an emergency, always reach out to emergency services, pick up that phone, call 911. And some people are even starting to use 988, which is a mental health emergency line that went live a few months ago. With all of that being said, we have to be very attentive to how we shift and how we change. And believe it or not, seasonal affective disorder does not exclude people from experiencing many of the same symptoms during the summer and springtime. It can happen in reverse. However, it is more frequent and uh, a lot more common for people to experience a lot of these changes in their sleep, eating habits, even in their mood, and even the thoughts of toward themselves and toward other people can shift around this time. And it is he heavily influenced not only by our weather change, not only by our exposure or lack of exposure to sun, but also it is majorly impact, uh, impacted by our hormones, which kind of all counteracts around these, these other variables that I brought up. So I'm bringing this up, not for you to go down the dive of, you know, wanting to be diagnosed by Dr. Google, but instead to encourage you to take care of yourself and to pay attention to how you are responding to the seasons changed. And if you are noticing that you're starting to do more of one thing and it's gotten to a point where it's not healthy, then you have to counter that. For example, if you're starting to eat more often than usual or even larger quantities of food, then you wanna be more attentive to that and start to counter it and pull back on what you're eating. The same thing with sleep. I know that some of us feel like, well, you can't get too much sleep. That's not true. Sometimes we sleep so much that we seem like we just can't get enough of it and we're still even waking up restless. At that point, it's not effective. And so paying attention to our changes in our behavior, changes in our moods, even thought patterns and how we are engaging or not engaging with other people socially are indicators of there may be a shift and it may be time to start to speak to a professional and get some help. Outside of that, another thing that comes up often during this time 
is a heightened sense of grief. Now, this is actually something that we don't like to talk about that much. Um, part of the reason is grief is not really easy to talk about. It brings up a lot of sad and negative emotions, but they are real emotions and they're real feelings. And it's something that we need to pay attention to. And especially because during this time or this time of the year, there's so many holidays, so many celebrations, and there's, uh, there's this expectation that we all should be in a celebratory mood or state, but that's not always the case. And so some of us end up forcing ourselves into feeling one way or another about a particular time but uh, deep down inside we actually are feeling a lot of grief uh, I, I'm here to encourage you and actually want to be quite sensitive to those of you who are experiencing grief and who are still grieving it is okay to give yourself permission to grieve it is okay to give yourself permission to say I don't feel like I'm in a celebratory mood and not have to force yourself into it it can be helpful to be around others who are having more of a positive mood. It can shift you into a more positive state, but I don't want you to deny yourself the opportunity to grieve and grieve properly, um, which actually shifts you into avoidance if you don't do that in denial. And we've talked about these defense mechanisms before. I um, just wanna encourage you to go ahead and check out some of those videos, uh, which I think was done sometime around October but also for you to acknowledge that it is okay and give yourself the permission to take the time to grieve, to take that time to express how you feel and realize that one moment you may feel like you need to grieve, another moment you may feel like you are going down memory lane and you're thinking of all the great times that you had or had with that loved one. Um, it fluctuates, your feeling may fluctuate and it's okay to have those fluctuating moments without having to force yourself to feel one way or another or without having to force yourself into an avoidant state or denial state because long term it's not healthy and it's not helpful. With all of that being said, I wanted to talk to you all about those two things, how the season impacts our mental health and also how the season actually brings up a lot of feelings of grief for many people, which we don't talk about enough as a society. And soon after December ends, which we are approaching very quickly, we have January, which is like the season where everybody wants to talk about, well, new year, new me. I get to, you know, start all over again, clean slate. Um, and I have some new topics coming up uh, related to that. But I want to remind you around, and I announced this before, that I will have a workshop that's going to be held online, a wellness workshop specifically, where I'll be facilitating this entire process so we can work on focusing on our coping history and shifting you into a place where you can utilize a more healthy and effective coping mechanism process or toolkit for you. And I want you to start your 2023 off well. So the information is right there at the bottom of the screen. And if it went too fast for you, of course, you can head down to the description box and get it there. And that information will also be on my social media. So make sure that you're following me at Dr. Blair on Instagram, plus Clubhouse and Facebook. Uh, say name across the board and uh, if you don't see me next week because I'm not, I cannot guarantee that I'll have content coming out every Wednesday or a full video coming out every Wednesday until the end of the year you may at least get a YouTube short or one of those one minute videos that come out but if you don't see me for a full video again I love you all I'm looking forward to seeing you all again in the new year like, comment, subscribe, and share. Share with your community and be sure to share with someone specific who may need to hear about seasonal affective disorder or even the impact of this season on our mental health. And of course, remember, before you go and I see you next time, if I'm great and you're great, then we're a great community.